ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All grace is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank him for giving us this opportunity to meet once again this week uh, for yet another um, lecture from the series of lectures of uh, the VGC um, Community Mosque, uh, Central Mosque. So we have today, inshallah, um, one of our scholars, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him upon goodness, and may mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase his benefit for the Ummah. Mm. Um, we have in our midst um, our Sheikh, Sheikh Abu Nasir Ibrahim Abdurrahu. He's with us here today, and he's going to be talking to us on an important issue. Um, something that even predates our existence, a war, a battle that we have entered into, uh, which our father started and which we have continued, the battle against Shaitan. And um, how do we survive his onslaught? What are the things that we need to know concerning his tricks, his games? And how do we uh, beat him? And, Ensure that we leave this dunya uh, without being one of this. We need it to meet. Okay. So, um, how do we how do we leave this dunya without being one of the statistics of uh, Shaitan? So, Inshallah, he is going to be taking us through this lecture. Um, so inshallah, we are, is going to take us through this lecture, and um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for him, and to bless all that he's going to tell us, and we also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it, accept the worship for him, and for the rest of us as well. So we invite um, Sheikh Abu Nasr to begin. Okay. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد أم Discussing Shaitan in the month of Ramadan, they sound, what are we doing? What are we discussing in Ramadan? Isn't it that, what are we discussing in Ramadan? Isn't it that the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that when Ramadan begins, uh, Sufi that, Sufi that ash-shayateen, that the shaitan, the devils become locked up. They become chained. And the doors of Jahannam become closed. So why are we bothered about Shayateen in the month of Ramadan? But this will come from two angles. The first angle is that Hudayf ibn al-Yaman radiallahu anhu or radiallahu anhuma himself and his father were companions. He said, كان الناس يسألون الرسول في الخير وكنت أسأله عن الشر مخافة أن يدركني. The people used to ask, or the people would ask the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam عن الخير about goodness. How do I get into Al-Jannah? How do I earn a lot of rewards? How do I gain this? How do I gain that? Is working to ask Aluhu and Shari. But I would ask the Messenger alayhi salatu was salam about things that we will consider negatives, evils. 
why mahafata and you break me because i fear that those evils may attack me so from the aspect of seeking goodness is to know how to avoid evil from the aspect of seeking goodness is to know how to avoid evil and i would have wished that as we discuss uh kafarat good deeds that takes away sin in ram that take away sin in ramadan as we discuss a lot of good deeds make sure that god pays that uh, fast in the month of ramadan and and and, and all of these we should also take time to discuss those things that destroy those good deeds so that it is not that one person is making a lot of good deeds in the entire night of ramadan he stays awake she stays awake making qiyam al-layl she cooks for people to eat she provides a lot of sadaqa and makes a lot of adkar reading a lot of quran and here we are he and she are both involved in things that will destroy the same good deeds So from the major things in our religion is that apart from seeking the means to goodness we must also explore the means of avoiding evil so this discussion is from the means of avoiding evil and unfortunately in that case the worst of evil that we have as humans is the evil of shaitan shaitan he believes is one of the worst evil that awaits man from among the evils of this dunya of course one of them is the jal but the jal himself is just a human being who only borrowed the name of shaitan otherwise shaitan is a worse enemy may allah protect all of us uh the discussion will be about shaitan so perhaps we should quickly look at what does it mean to say shaitan we say the word a lot shaitan shaitan in english we say satan what does the shaitan mean ulama say linguistically shaitan is taken from the word shaitan shaitan yani li shutunihi anil khair wal haqq because he has shutun he has bu'd li bu'dihi anil khair wal haqq when something is far away from the truth shaitan was so named because he is far away from the truth he is far away from goodness so he is called libordihi anil khair wal haqq because his father is away from al khair is away from goodness and he is away from the truth so you find arabs if they have a well that is deep they refer to it as biirun shafun biirun shafun if they say biirun shafun what they are saying is that it is a well that is deep when they have a safar shafun a journey that they refer to as shafun it is what a safar al baid that is a journey that is far likewise when they say uh, a shatun regarding regarding the niyat what the mean is that that niya that intention that goal is ba'ida it is far fetched when a niya is ba'ida it is far fetched so when something is far away li bu'dihi that word shatun or shafana is employed so an shaitan is picked from this basic word shafana why why is shaitan picked from the word fairness shaitan was picked from that word shafana li bu'dihi anil khairi wal haqqi because shaitan is far away from goodness shaitan is far away so likewise human beings when they are far away when a human being is far away from the truth and goodness he can also be referred to as shaitan but when we now say ash shaitan with the al the definite article we refer to aduwallah iblis we refer to aduwallah the enemy of allah iblis and we know he's also referred to as iblis in passages of the quran qala ya iblis ma manaka an tasjuda lima khalaqtu bi yadayk
name is Iblis. His real name is Iblis. But he is Shaitan because he's far away from Al Haq. He's far away from Al Khair. May Allah protect us from this person who is far away from Khair, who is far away from Haq. He wants to put away the people from the path of Haq. This is the first thing about Iblis. May Allah protect all of us. The second issue we like to discuss about Iblis is that the enmity that Iblis has against us, like uh, the Imam said, Sheikh Suleiman Kilani, the enmity that Shaitan directs against us, that Iblis directs against us, was an enmity that we have inherited from our father, Adam alayhi salam. We got that enmity from our forefather, Adam alayhi salam. You remember in Surah Al-Baqarah, in Surah Al-A'raf, in Surah Al-Hijr, in Surah Al-Sad, in many places in Surah Al-Kahf, when Allah told us about his order for Adam والسلام, to get the prostration, the order was for the Malaika and Iblis to get to prostrate themselves before Adam. They all prostrated. In that, in Surah Al-Sad, he says, فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ The Malaika amongst them. Iblis. The one who did not prostrate was Iblis. Iblis did not prostrate. Illa Iblis He was behaving arrogantly. So Iblis did not prostrate. So he became arrogant because what he told Allah was that Ana Iblis said Ana because Allah asked him, Ya Iblis, ma mana'aka an tasjuda bima khalaqtu biyadaya takbaruta am kunta min al-alim qala ana khayrun minhu. Iblis boasted that he was better than Adam alayhi salam was the reason why he was not going to prostrate to our father, our father Adam alayhi salam. And Allah disgraced him. Allah cursed him. Allah sent him away from his mercy. And he became the accursed. From that very occasion, he says, Allah says to us on that occasion that Iblis, after he became disgraced, he says, Fabi'izzatika la ugui annahum ajma'i. Fabi'izzatika. This ba, bi'izzatika, is a harf of taking an oath. It is from amongst the Ruhul Fasa. So he made an oath. I swear by your mightiness, Allah. La, this lamb is la mutawfid. So you can imagine the affirmation with which Shaitan Iblis was declaring enmity with us. He says, Fabi Izzatika, by your I swear by your mightiness, O Allah. La ugwiya nahum. La this lamb is la mutawfid. La nahum. This noon is noon of Tawheed Akfatila. So you can see the emphasis with which Shaitan was saying that he was going to mislead mankind. He said, Fabi'izzatika la ugwiya nahum ajma'i. I swear by your mightiness, I shall surely and certainly ugwiya nahum. I shall lead them astray. This is the problem we have today. Shaitan boasted to Allah that he shall lead us astray. We beg Allah to protect us from this evil of Shaitan. In elsewhere in the Quran, it says, As you have made me gone astray, la lahum I will sit waiting for them. La lahum. I will sit against them upon your sirat mustaqim. La lahum mustaqim. I will lay siege. I will lay. I will lay. I will lay a trap. I will stay, stay as a trap 
ready to pick them upon Sirat al-Mustaqim. If they are running upon Sirat al-Mustaqim, I vow I will remove them from it. May Allah protect all of us. He went on to say, While I wait for them to remove them from Sirat al-Mustaqim, he went on to say, I will come from their front, from before them. Wamin Khalfihim and from behind them. Wan Aimanihim, I shall come from their right hand, from their right side, Wan Shama Ilhi, and I shall come from their left side. Wala Tajidu Aftarhum Shakirin. La Tajidu Aftarhum. You will find that most of them will not be people who will show gratitude and worship you. They will not show gratitude. So Shaitan declared to Allah that he is going to lay siege on the road and lead us astray. He's going to come from before us. He's going to come from behind us. He's going to come from our right side. He's going to come from our left side. Wala tajidu He vowed to Allah that he will be sure that most of mankind will be people who will not be grateful to Allah. In Surah to Nisa, Allah tells us more about the vow of Shaitan. He says, Wala udillanahum. Wala udillanahum. This lamb again is lamb of Tawqid. We see again, no, no, Tawqid of Sakila. Wala udillanahum. I will certainly mislead them. They will certainly mislead mankind. Look at the declaration of enmity. Wala umaniyanahum. I will create in them desires that they cannot fulfill. Subhanallah. Shaitan vows to Allah that he will certainly create enough desires that we will find difficult to fulfill. But he will make us think that we will fulfill it. And then we we'll start racing on pursuing desires that are hard to get. I will command them and then they will slit the ears of their animals. That is, I will command them to be wicked. I will command them to be evil. I will command them to do things that are unlawful. He says also, I will also command them to make good efforts on them to be sure that they change what Allah has created. So you can see the vow of shaitan. You can see how resolute shaitan is. So we have an enemy that is vowing to mislead us. He vows to create in us desires we can't fulfill. He vows to, to make us commit sin. He vows to be sure that he comes from all angles, from before us, from behind us. Unfortunately, also, brother, this enemy is one that we do not see. We do not see him. We do not see Shaitan. May Allah protect us. Unfortunately, Shaitan is older than all of us on the earth today as he was older than our father Adam alayhi salam. So he presumably has some more experience of life than we do. He believes Shaitan is older than you and I. He is also and was also older than our father Adam. And he has been in existence right from the time of our father Adam till today. How much of experience do we think he would have gained? And how much of professionalism do you think you would have gained in the art of misleading the people? May Allah protect us. The shaitan is an enemy we don't see. And he vows to attack us from all angles. And unfortunately, he also has two things that make it also very scary in addition to the things that have been mentioned. The Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, makes us understand that shaitan can also run inside our blood veins our veins. The least can run in the veins of Banu Adam. So you have an enemy you don't see. He's older than you. He has more experience than you, are, you have. He can run in between your veins. He can run inside your body. And then he has soldiers that are so many. And then you are not seeing him. You see this kind of an enemy? May Allah protect us. That's why the best of what we have is running back to Allah for protection. Otherwise, I don't know how it is easy for us to fight this battle. So apart from his vows, 
Allah himself told us about, about Iblis after we have understood this is an enemy that will come from behind us. He will come from our front. He will come from our right side. He will come from our left side to be sure that none of us gives gratitude to Allah. And this enemy is invisible. This enemy can come into our body and run through our veins. This enemy has a lot of soldiers with him. And this enemy is older than us. So how are we going to face this enemy? That's why Allah warned us severally in the Quran. It says, Innahu aduwun mubilun mubin. Innahu certainly iblis aduwun. Is a serious enemy. Mubilun. A person who leads the people astray. Mubin. Clear in these two things. Is clearly an enemy and is clearly a, clearly a misguiding person. Also in the Quran, in Surah Al Fatir, Allah says, Inna shaytana lakum aduun fatakhiruhu aduwa. Inna shaytan, certainly Iblis, aduun lakum aduun. Look at, he didn't say aduun lakum, he says lakum, lelikhtifa. Is specially, specifically an enemy to you. Is specifically an enemy, as if you don't have any other enemy apart from Iblis. Lakum aduun, fatakhiruhu aduwa. So you should beware, beware, hold him as an enemy, because what he will do is inna ma yadru hisbahu liyakunu min ashabi sa'ir. All that he will do is yadru hisbahu. He will invite his own people so that they all will be from amongst the people of the fire. So shaitan is an avowed, clear enemy. Elsewhere in the Quran, Allah told us one of those things shaitan will do. He says, As shaitan will threaten you with poverty. He will encourage you and command you to do shameful things. So you see this enemy. He runs in your blood. You don't see him. He is older than you. He has a lot of armies, workers. And he's far, far, far experienced than you are. How do we face this enemy? And he has declared enmity against you. How do we handle this enemy? So Allah told us, a lot about shaitan. May Allah protect all of us. So we go to two so important aspects of this discourse. And we'll try to be very fast, inshallah, because of the time limitations that we may have after introducing this discourse this way. The first thing we'd like to discuss are Turuku Idilali Shaitan Ilinas, the means by which shaitan misleads the people. The means, what are those means? After he has vowed and after we have recognized his abilities, how, how, then, how then do we, what are the things that he does? When we understand them, then our suggestions that the Prophet gave, that Allah also gave us in the Quran, they will find a place in our understanding, inshallah. What are those means? that shaitan employs to mislead the people. The first one is tazinul batil. The first means by which shaitan misleads the people is tazinul batil. He brandishes, he ornaments, he designs evil to look like good. Shaitan brandishes, he shows evil to look good. Shaitan chose evil to look good. And he himself said he was going to do that. He says, La lahum fil ardi wa ajma'in. In Surah Al Hijr, he says, La lahum fil ardi. I will brandish, I'll make things look nice to them. I'll make things that are bad. I'll make it look good. I will make things look good, look, make this world look fine 
things that are evil, he will take them good. May Allah protect all of us. And we know that we are in that generation now. The generation where evil is painted in the in the cloud, in the in the garb of goodness. So it's from the truth, from the ways of Shaitan's misleading the people. He himself said, La ajma'in, and then he will mislead us. So the first thing is tazyinul bafu, making evil to look good, to seem to be good. From that is tasmiyatul ma'asi bi asma'i. The Asma'i Muhabbaba. Tasmiyatul Ma'asi. Giving sin. Names that are alluring. Giving sin. Names that are attractive. Names people will like. Like referring to the evil homosexual as a gay. Lexically, a gay means a person who is happy. So what's the happiness to the person who does one of the worst evil on the earth, a man mating a man. What, what, what's the happiness in this? But Shaitan makes it fair seem, so he calls it gay. All the entertainment in the show. What is the entertaining in the show, evil show of nudity? What is entertaining in that? What is entertaining in the evil proclamation of vulgar words and promotion of vulgarity? What is entertaining? What are you entertaining in that? And the show of uh, sheer disobedience to Allah. Who says, what is the entertainment in that? For a group of people who are involved in no more than vulgarity in speech and in action, they say they are entertaining. So, tasmiyatul ma'asi bi asma'i muhabbab. Naming, naming sin, naming criminality with the names that make them look attractive. And you remember that was the approach he employed against our father to Adam and his wife, Awa. He says, Hal adulluka ala shajaratul khuldi wa mulki la yabla. Did I guide you to shajaratul khul? A tree that when you eat it, you will live forever. Wa mulki la yabla. And a kingdom that has no end. You see? The tree that Allah had prohibited him to eat from. That is the same tree Shaitan now tells him that oh, this is the tree of life forever and the tree of, of kingdom forever. And Allah has not created anybody to live forever. So the point there is that Shaitan names evil. The first one, he brandishes it, it makes, gives it a nice brand, as we call it in our world today. The second one, he gives it a name. The first one, he you know brandishes, makes it neat, makes it clean and attractive to the eyes. The second one, he makes it attractive to the ears. May Allah protect us. The third thing regarding that is that tasmiya to thought the asma'i munafira. The asma'i munafira. Naming thought acts of obedience to Allah. The Asma'i Munafira, giving them names, tagging them with names that make the people become dissociated. Names that will make goodness to look repulsive. So when a person is a person of religion, they say he's an extremist. When a person is a, a person of reverence for Allah and righteousness, they say, oh, he looks childish. They gave him a name. He says a terrorist, he's a fundamentalist, he's too strict is not accommodating. They give him a tag. They give names to acts of obedience in a manner that makes that act look repulsive. You remember the people of Nuh salam. What they said to Nuh was that, we don't see you as any more than a man like us. We have not seen from any of those who follow you. Except the useless ones among, amongst us. People whose thinking are keep thinking of the people of the village. People whose thoughts are ancient. People whose thoughts are thoughts of 
bakwone wama kana wama lana wama lakum alayna min fadl we don't see anything you have that we do with which you are better than us so you see they refer to them as badi or ra'i people of uh, people who are not civilized uncivilized people uncult people this is the tag this is the name they give to people of obedience may allah protect us in our own times now it is common in the media when they talk about a scholar of islam they say cleric what does cleric mean what does cleric mean a scholar is a scholar and imam is an imam the word imam itself is english today imam is an english word why refer to him as a cleric and imam said it a scholar said it a muslim scholar said it but instead of that they give him a tag of a cleric so tasmiya to ta'at bi asma'in munakkara giving names giving repulsive names to good deeds when you are patient today they say you slack when you keep quiet they say you are not also oh, okay these kinds of tagging and labeling is from the ways of shaitan may allah protect us from the evil of shaitan the fourth thing about the means of shaitan is دخوله إلى النفس من أحب الأبواب إليها دخول الشيطان إلى النفس من أحب الأبواب إليها شيطان attacks the individual from the best things that he loves so you and I need to be careful if you like eating food be sure that shaitan is going to come to you from food he can tell you to eat something that is prohibited he can tell you to eat something that is lawful beyond the limit because when you eat beyond limit you fall into his his trap when you eat beyond limit you fall into the traps of shaitan or he can make you even begin to beg you see people begging for food who will cook for me who will cook a soup for me i like this soup you take a picture and you start advertising on the social media you want someone to cook for you he can make you beg from angles that you don't expect the shaitan attacks the individual from the things that you like if you like nawafil shaitan can come from that angle he will suggest things to you that you are now a righteous man and then you begin to become arrogant if you are a person who likes reading the quran shaitan can come to you from that angle you will be singing the praises of yourself to your ears and then you become the person who feels self important May Allah forgive all of us. If you are a person who give sermons and they are heard, Shaitan will come to you. There is nobody like you. You have a large crowd. Everybody is listening to you. All of these are from the gimmick of Shaitan. Shaitan yadkhulu ila nafsi min abwabi min ahabbi al-abwabi ilayha. Shaitan penetrates a soul. from the most desirous thing to that soul if you like giving sadaqa shaitan will come to you and make you feel that oh there is nobody that is as benevolent as you are if you like to marry wives and take care of your home shaitan will tell you there is no man like you so let us be careful about all of these the fifth thing we like to mention is that at tadarruj fil idlal shaitan misguides the people gradually if you want people to commit shirk he does not or may not come from shirk he will start from something that is lesser than that and then the man begins to compromise he wants him to join a political party he is taking him to shirk but it will start with a political party and to join that political party will start with saying that i want to help islam and muslims Is that not a good idea i want to help islam and muslims you start from there how do you help them i want to get to authority how do you get to authority i want to become a politician before becoming a politician you must be giving people sadaqa so that they know you to be a benevolent giver and when you join party politics they can now encourage you to become something in the party so you start by giving people sadaqa feeding people in ramadan your intention is not to feed the poor in ramadan that's not the intention the intention is that you may be known you may become popular 
how many people, how many platforms have organized Ramadan lectures so that that platform will be known just for that, just say for it to be known, just to get the popularity. How many platforms have organized programs for this reason? May Allah forgive all of us. The point here is that as shaitan yadkulu ila nafsi min ahabbil abwabi ilayha, shaitan approaches the soul from the best of it what we like, and then that at the darruju fil idlal, he comes to mislead us gradually. So he starts, the man begins to spend the money. He wants to become a politician, and then he joins the politics so that the people he had been giving money would be the ones hailing him and jubilating and running behind him. Meanwhile, he had destroyed him from the very beginning. So you see the gradualness, like what is Zina? It starts with the man beginning to look at the individual. The male begins to cast his glance at the female and vice versa, begins to look at her. The scholars say, Baptisama. After that, they begin to smile when they look at one another. Pakalamun. And then after that, the hello, hi, begins to go on. And then they begin to make an arrangement for each time. And then after that, they meet in the secret and committee. The point here is that shaitan becomes gradually when he misleads the people. May Allah protect all of us from the evils of shaitan. The seventh thing, or the sixth thing we like to mention is that Asadju Anil Haq, Shaitan deliberately shuts the doors of goodness, the doors of righteousness in the face of the people. He shuts the door, that's all. He does not make the people see anything righteous. And he does not make them desire. All his suggestions to them, them is don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. When you tell a woman where he got, she will give you no, forget about that. Brother, please, you can talk about Islam, but don't talk about hijab. Oh, you can talk about hijab, but don't talk about the feast day. Oh, you can talk about uh, everything in Islam, but don't talk about sunnah. Oh, here, I've heard someone who is an imam saying that when you say salafia, you are talking about art. You are talking about evil. You are talking about commotion and disharmony in the Ummah. The excuses you give to all these kinds of people, the excuses of ignorance. But the point here is that Shaitan closes the door of goodness to the people. Something that's good, he closes the door. He does not want anybody to see anything good in that. May Allah protect us from the evil of Shaitan. That's why he says, La mustaqim. He's going to sit in waiting on Sirat al-Mustaqim. He wants to put the people away from Sirat al-Mustaqim. May Allah protect all of us. The seventh thing about the evils, how shaitan misleads the people is, izhaar al-nusqhi lil-insan, subhanallah. Izhaar al-nusqhi lil-insan. al is sincere advice out of love. When you love somebody, you are advised him sincerely. Shaitan will show you that he is sincerely advising you. So when the suggestion towards evil will come, it will appear as if it is something that is very, very good. Shaitan told our father, and Allah told us about him. He says, Shaitan said to Adam and Hawa, our mother, Asamahuma. He was swearing to them. He was giving oaths to them. In me, lakuma, lamin and now seeking. I am a sincere advisor. I love you. That's why I'm advising you sincerely. So you see a man, he wants to make zina with a woman. May Allah protect all of us. He'll be saying, talking to her as if he's giving her an advice. But he knew and he knows. May Allah protect all of us. That he's not doing any other than inviting the young girl to eat. But he will be behaving like a sincere advice. So watch that advice. Watch it. Watch it when he advises you. And watch it when she advises you. They have something good to tell you. What is it? It is no other than disobedience to Allah. So what is the good thing about it? But the way of shaitan is that you zahirul khair. 
يظهر النصح للإنسان. He shows to the person as if he is a sincere advisor when he is a destroyer of the individual. May Allah protect all of us. Another way Shaitan approaches mankind is Ali Fi'ana to be Shayateen al Ins. Yasta'inu bi Shayateen al Ins. Shaitan also employs the pitans amongst human beings. We said that the meaning of Shaitan is a person who is far away from faith and haq, a person who is far away from truth and is also far away from faith, is far away from goodness. So he now has amongst human beings people he has converted, people he has made to undergo, undergo training under him. They are now evil and he has trained them to also be able to be evil and diabolical. Allah says, وَإِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ لَيُحْرُونَ إِلَىٰ أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ لِيُجَادِلُهُمْ Certainly, the Satans amongst human beings and amongst genes لَيُحْرُونَ إِلَىٰ أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ they give, they give suggestions. They give suggestions. They give advices إِلَىٰ أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ to their friends. So you can find the genes, the shayateen amongst the genes, strengthening some group of human beings against the people of piety and righteousness. So that they can face this people of righteousness and fight the people of righteousness. So one of the ways of shaitan is to employ Satan amongst human beings. So that's man who comes to invite you to a business of one million naira that is a 419 business is a shaitan. The woman that has come to invite you to Zina is shaitan. The man that has come to invite you to Zina is shaitan. Everyone who is a stepping stone inviting you to shaitan and disobedience to Allah is a shaitan because he's taking you away from the haqq and he is actually doing that because he's far away from al haqq and al khair. That is the meaning of being a shaitan. May Allah protect all of us. It means we all must be wary about shayateen ul ins wal jinn. We have mentioned eight of them, and I think the, the time is also fast spent. We should quickly go to the means of seeking protection from Allah, from the evil of shaitan. The first one is al ikhlas, having ikhlas for Allah, having ikhlas for Allah. That is being sure that our worship is for Allah alone. Being sure that our ibadat are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Directing our worship to Allah alone and no one else. Being sure that our worship is for Allah alone, al-ikhlas. When you are a person of ikhlas, shaitan will find it hard to penetrate you. He himself said that in Surah to uh, Al Hijr, Allah told us that Shaitan said, "Qala Rabbi, bima guaytani la uzayinan lahum fil ardi, wa la uhu yannahum ajmain." As you have made me to go astray, la uzayinan lahum fil ardi, I will uh, make things on the earth to look fair seeming to them. I will make sins to be first to me to them. And I will mislead all of them. Except those amongst your slaves who are sincere in sod. He said the same thing. But the Except ibada kamin humul mukhlasin, and there's a kriwa kira'a of illa ibada kamin humul mukhlasin. The first means of seeking protection against shaitan is that, oh brother, be sure that you are a sincere person in your ibada. Be sure that in, when you give a someone, you are sincere in it. Be sure that when you preach Islam, you are sincere in it. Otherwise, Allah has no need for it. You are just doing the, the bidding of shaitan. But when you are sincere with the 
you do it to seek the face of Allah alone. You do it to seek the face of Allah alone, not to seek a popularity, not to seek a show. This is the reason why you invite onto the path of Allah. When you do this, Allah will protect you from the gimmicks of Shaitan. The second thing about how to find protection against the evils of Shaitan is Tahtikul Ubudiyati Lillahi Wahda. Tahtikul Ubudiyati Lillahi Wahdahu. Tahtikul Ubudiyati. Be ensure that we are able to establish truly establishing worship for Allah alone. That is perfecting your worship. The other one, be sincere. This second one, perfect your worship. Many of us say we are Muslims. We have not perfected our Tawheed. We should go back to learn the Abu'ab, the sections of Tawheed, oneness of Allah. What are the ways by which I need to establish the oneness of Allah? Our salat, how is, how is our salat? We need to perfect our salat. We need to perfect our tahara. We need to perfect our hajj. We need to perfect the way we observe our siyam. And perfecting them is bringing them upon the sunnah. Bring, bring your salat upon the sunnah. Bring your fasting upon the sunnah. Bring your hajj upon the sunnah. Bring your zakah upon the sunnah. Bring how you dress upon the sunnah. In fact, bring your thoughts upon the sunnah. Bring your mind upon the sunnah. Bring what you think, what you don't think. Bring your sleep upon the sunnah. Leaving your home, bring it upon the sunnah. All of these form from the aspects of tahtikul ubudiyati lillahi wahda. Affirming and establishing worship for Allah alone. This is the second way, the evening law, to seek protection from Satan. How Allah said in the Quran that in the ibadi, they salat alayhim sultan. In the ibadi, my servants who truly serve me and worship me, they salat alayhim sultan. You don't have any kind of authority over them. So it means the more the individual affirms and establishes ibadah for Allah, the more he's protected against Satan. There are similar verses also in, I think, Surah Al Fatih. وَلَقَدْ صَدَّقَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِبْلِيسُ غَنَّهُ فَاتَّبَعُوهُ إِلَّا فَرِيقًا مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَمَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ لَهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا لِنَعْلَمَ مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِالْآخِرَةِ مِنْ مَنْ هُوَ مِنْ آفِي شَبْتَ وَرَبُّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَفِيظٍ For those who perfect their iman and abstain from any kind of doubt, so the more you perfect your iman, the more you perfect your deen, the more you are protected from any kind of authority from shaitan. So the second point here is tahtikul ubudiyati lillahi wahda. Being sure that our worship is for Allah alone. This is the second means of seeking protection against shaitan. The third one is luzumul jama'ah, speaking to the congregation of the Muslims. Don't go and stay alone. You are staying alone, staying alone in Lekki, you are staying alone in VGC. You don't have any kind of congregation meeting with the rest of the Muslims. That's a dangerous thing. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Man arada, man arada bi habwatil jannah, man arada bi habwatil jannah, whoever desires to stay in the middle of paradise on the day of Qiyamah. Let him speak to the community of the Muslims. So relate to the community of the Muslims. Don't stay alone. If you are from the north, for example, you are from either Adamawa or Kanun or Meiduguri or Sokoto or Zampara, your wife is from the same place. You memorize the whole Quran. You memorize Sahih al-Bukhari and all, whatever. You are the biggest scholar. Don't stay alone. Come out to the rest of the people. The Prophet said, if you don't come out, فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ مَعَ الْوَاحِدِ Shaitan مَعَ الْوَاحِدِ فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ Iblis is with you. With your memorization of the Quran, with your knowing ahadith, with your knowing the sunnah, gradually you will begin to wane. 
you begin to go down. The same thing, young boys and girls in the higher institutions. Don't stay alone. Mix up. Go into the midst of the Muslims. Go into the congregation. Likewise, those of us who live in other areas, be sure that you are not alone. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam, fa inna shaitan ma'al wahid. Shaitan is with the one that is alone. Wa huwa min al ithnaini abadi. And it's far away when the people are two. So when you are alone, shaitan is nearer to you. When you are two, he's farther away. When you are three, he's further away. When you are four, he's further away. The more you are, the more shaitan goes away. How and why? If you are alone, he's with you. So the battle is between yourself and that man, you are that individual, that creature, shaitan, from amongst the jinn, that you are not seeing. You are not seeing him. And he sees you. He's older than you. He runs in your veins. He has more experience than you are, than you have. He begins to suggest to you. He will take away all the goodness you think you have, and there will be nobody to correct you. But when you are two, once you begin to wane and come down, the second person will be reminding you, hey, you started coming down. You started so far. When you are two, he's far away. Because if you are not reminding your partner, your partner will remind you. If you are not reminding your colleague, your colleague will remind you. So it will be more difficult for Shaitan to penetrate the two of you. But when you are alone, a Shaitan umaaka. Shaitan is with you, it's just between yourself and him. And that's why Alim Farad, staying alone is prohibited in Islam because Shaitan is just there with you. When you find a woman living alone, it's easy for her. She's an easy prey in the hands of Shaitan. Why? The Prophet وسلم, said, Shaitan is with a person that is just alone. But when you are two, Shaitan is for die away from you. May Allah protect us from the evils of Shaitan. The fourth one, Al Muhafazatu Allah Salat al Jama'a. Seeking to observing the Salah in Jama'a is one of the means by which Allah puts away Shaitan from the individual. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam said, ما من خلافة في قرية ولا بدو لا تقام فيهم الصلاة إلا قد استحوذ عليهم الشيطان ما من خلافة في قرية There are no three groups of people. Three, three individuals. One, two, three people. في قرية in a village ولا بدو or in a remote area لا تقام فيهم الصلاة And they are not establishing the Salah. There are three. They are not observing salah in jama'ah. Three of them staying in a place. So when you get to any place, the first thing you must look for is the masjid. And when you are one, look for the next person. When you are two, you look for the next person. And when you are three, establish a salah, a place where you'll be observing salah. Ma min falafatin fi qariyatin wala badwin. La tuqamu fihim as-salah. When you don't do that to establish salah to the jama'ah, illa wa qad istahwaza alayhim as-shaytan. Shaytan will overrun the three of you. When you are three and you don't establish salah to the jama'ah in your community, istahwaza alaykum as-shaytan. Shaytan will overrun you and overpower you. Fa'alayka dil jama'ah. The Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. This hadith is the hadith of Abu Darda. So stick to the Jama'ah. Because the the zib, what is the zib? What is the zib? The fox. He takes the one amongst the head of the animal. The one that is away from the rest, that is the one that it will pick. The fox, the fox picks the, the sheep that goes away from the head, yani from the rest of the sheep. So, al muhafadatu ala salatu jama'ah Seeking to observing salah in jama'ah is one of the ways to protect ourselves against shaitan. If you are doing goodness 
as surgeons. When you come as Salah to Zohr, something happens, a brother will see you, he'll start calling your attention, say, brother, why did you do this? Oh, brother, absorb it. If you come in as they will see you. If you come, it's the means of auditing yourself and checking yourself. You too, you will help the rest of your brother because the Muslims are like, Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam, Kalbumiyan, Yashudu Ba'duhu Ba'du. They are like a solid structure. One part supports the other. You will not get that support if you are alone. You will not get that support if you are alone. Once they try to fix you, you are gone. May Allah protect all of us. These are from the means of depression too. Because the depression will come in when you are alone. You're alone. Shaitan comes and begins to tell you all a lot of evils in your heart. He's your enemy. Inna shaitan alakum adu. He's your enemy. So don't say, why is shaitan bringing all these thoughts in your mind? He is bringing the thoughts because he's your enemy. He had vowed that la atiyannahum in bayni aidihim wa an aymanihim wa an shamailihim. He said, I will come from in front of you from behind. From all angles, I will attack you. So when you are alone and the man is attacking you from all angles, what do you do? You will fall prey. May Allah protect us. So that's why he says, when the people are three in a community, they are not observing solar in Jama'ah. The meaning is that they are not seeing themselves regularly. Then Shaitan has an opportunity to grab them one by one. So when you are together, he's far away. So let us be sure that if you are living in a community, go and be observing Salat in the masjid with the rest of the community. The fifth thing we like to mention, stick to the Quran and the Sunnah. Stick to the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah says, Ya ayuhal lazina aman kulu tuksil nika fatan wa la tattabi'u Enter into Islam completely. Don't follow the footsteps of Shaitan because he's your enemy. So come into Islam fully. Obey Allah fully. Follow the Quran fully. Follow the Sunnah fully. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, also. That when in the verse in the Quran, when Allah says, وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ فَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُّلَ فَتَفَرَّقُوا بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهُ وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا This is my path and the path is straight. فَاتَّبِعُوهُ So follow it. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلَ Don't follow all of that strained paths. And then by you following strange paths, you become divided amongst yourself. A way, you become estranged away from the right path. When the Prophet made this statement, alayhi salatu wasalam, he drew a line and asked us all to be upon Sirat al Mustafim. So come into Islam. My dear brother, don't run away from the injunctions of the Quran. Don't run away from the sunnah. And by this, I like to say that many of us who live in these kinds of communities, BGC, Lekki, and all of these, go and look for the books of Tafsir that are now translated in English. There's Tafsir Ibn Kathir in English. There's Tafsir Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Sidi in English. There are all these books in English. Pick them. There is Sahih al Bukhari in very good modern day English in six volumes. There is Sahih Muslim in modern day English in six volumes. There is Sunan Abi Dawood in English, modern day English, with comments that will make you understand every hadith. There is Sunan Abi Dawood, the Sunan al Nasai, the Sunan al Tirmidhi. All these books are available. There is the Shah of Riyadh al Salihin by Sheikh. Muhammad ibn Salih al -Uthaymin. I translated that with one of the brothers in English in six big volumes. There is the Sharh of Kitab al tawheed by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al -Uthaymin. Please be sure that you have these books in your house and pay attention to them and read them. So when we say stick to the Quran and the Sunnah, what Quran and Sunnah will you stick to when you don't know it? So something that precedes that is knowledge. You don't know it. All what you fill your house with, with 
our IT gadgets. You die away and leave these gadgets and go away. Your children may not even benefit from it. So why not keep a library in your home? Keep a library in your home. You can boast of knowing everything that happens in the world. You are a regular viewer of Al Jazeera. You are a regular viewer of CNN. You know what's happening in every corner of the world, but you don't even know how to absorb Is that not a thing of shame? So build up something. Do a library for yourself in your house, something you look at and you are happy. At these kinds of times in Ramadan and in any other time, your weekends are filled with books you want to read. Some people boast, someone said, I think last year or two, two years ago, that Bill Gates read about 100 books in one year. You that you are a Muslim, that the Quran teaches you to read, read. How many books have you read? I always say this. People say one man is a, is a British, he's an American, he's this. he read 50 books per year. These people are not Muslims. What these books are books of lies, either fiction or mere opinions of people who sat down to give opinion. What people read are either fictions or people's life stories, one man's life story. One man started a company and then he made it millions in the company. That's all. It ends. It's all about this dunya. All that an opinion somebody is giving. He's giving an opinion about an affair. He's giving an opinion about an issue. Your opinion may be right. He may be wrong. He will philosophize right here and there and compile 600 pages. This man who will read 600 pages cannot read one single volume of guidance from something like that. He cannot read one single volume from the 10 volumes of the Tafsir of Ibn Kathir. You can't read one of the volumes. Is this not a tahrim? Is this not that you are becoming a, a person that Allah has estranged from good men? You have one single volume of Sahih al-Bukhari. You have one volume of Tafsir Ibn Kathir. You can't read it, but you can read the funny ideas of one British, one American, one Australian that he had penned about his own life or the life of somebody else. What are you doing? This is trauma. This is, you are being prohibited if from the triton has come upon you if you are like this. Let us all change when Roman God. Go to the bookstores, go to Beit Zina, go to what, what's the Arabel. There are brothers, people selling books. Look for good books to stockpile in your home and pay your, let your time you spend be upon reading about Allah and his messenger and improving yourself upon the guidance that you will need in this dunya in your grave and the day of the year. So that point we were emphasizing is Alil Tizamu bin Kitabi was sunnah. From the ways of seeking protection against Shaitan is Alil Tizamu sticking to Al-Quran and sticking to the Sunnah. The sixth thing I would like to mention about that is Alistia'ana to Billahi ala shaitan. Maybe I would have mentioned this one first. Alistia'ana to Billahi ala shaitan. Asking for Allah's help, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asking for Allah's help, Allah shaitan, away from shaitan, asking Allah to help us. Allah himself told us that in the Quran, because this enemy is big. The enemy is older than us, as old as my great-grandfather Adam. And he has a lot of tricks. He even tricked my great-grandfather Adam. There's a verse in Surah Al-Fatiha, as an individual, each time I read that verse, it makes me fear this battle with shaitan. May Allah protect all of us. That it's something we really need to take serious. Allah, after mentioning Adam's falling to the prey of shaitan, he says, lahu azma. Adam. Allah created Adam with his two hands. Yet shaitan deceived him. And Allah says, Lam lahu azma. He did not have sufficient, he was not decisive enough. He was not decisive if Adam, Allah, describes him like this, how about you? Adam was Nabi, and upon the view that I hold, is also a Rasul. He's Nabi, Rasul. There are those among the scholars who hold the view also that Adam is Rasul. So please, don't make an issue out of that. 
So Adam is a messenger of Allah and a prophet of Allah. And then Shaitan deceived him. He did not have sufficient, he was not decisive enough. How about you and I? How decisive will we be? It means the safest thing we have is to seek refuge with Allah. Seeking refuge with Allah. So that's what Allah told us that in the Quran. When Nazagat to Shayateen and uh, suggestions, evil suggestions from Shaitan. When they approach you, Fasta'if Billah, seek refuge with Allah. Fasta'if Billah, inna hu hu wassami ulalib. Allah hears all things. Allah is aksami. He hears all things. He is Al Ali. He knows all the evil plots of Shaitan. May Allah protect us from Shaitan. So when you go out of your home, seek protection. When you are coming into your house, seek protection. When you eat your food, seek protection. Say Bismillah. So that the Shaitan does not eat with you. The Prophet taught us that. When you come to your family, Inshallah, we will come back to that. When you come to your family, seek protection. Protection. The Prophet taught us what to say. When you come into the bathroom, seek protection. The Prophet taught us what to say. When you sleep, seek protection. The Prophet taught us what to say. Why is it that the Muslim will fall free? He follows the dictates of the Sharia. The seventh thing we like to mention about seeking protection from Shaitan is Tasrat to Qur'an. Tasrat to Qur'an. Being sure that we make lots of acts of obedience to Allah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا قَرَعَ بْنُ عَدَمَ أَسَّجْدَةَ فَسَجَدَ أَسَّجْدَ سُورَةُ السَّجْدَ There is a verse in Surah Al-Sajda that has the sajda. Uh, that verse... The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we read it and we make sujood, Shaitan Shaitan Yabuki Yakul. Shaitan moves away from you. He begins to weep and saying that, Ya Waila, ah, oh, look at this one. Umir Abn Adam, he'll be saying, ah, oh, regarding himself, look at this one. This one has love. The son of Adam was asked to prostrate. He was asked to make He makes sujood. And he makes sujood. He will end al-jannah. But as for me, I was asked to make sujood. But I refused. So the only thing he will be deserving, he will say, the only thing I will be deserving is the fire. But well, here the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, when you read Sajda and make Sujud, Shaitan moves away. It means the more acts of obedience you make, the more away Shaitan will be moving from you. The more acts of obedience, the more encouraged, the more discouraged Shaitan will leave from you. The eighth thing I like to mention, is tahsin ul ahli wal awladi wal amwal tahsin hisnu tahsin tahsin ul ahli wal awladi wal amwal protecting your family your wives wal awlad your children wal amwal and your possession protect them the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said idha tazawwaja ahadukum ra'atan if one any of you marries a woman I wish Tara Khadiman or he buys a servant, a slave. He says, Alayhi salatu was salam, Fal Yakud. The individual should say, the individual should say, Allahumma inni as'aluka khayraha wa khayra ma jabaltaha alayhi. Oh Allah, 
inni as'aluka khairaha oh allah i ask you from the of the goodness in this woman wa khaira ma jabaltaha alayk and the, the goodness that you have created her with wa a'udhu bika min sharriha wa min sharri ma jabaltaha alayk i also ask your refuge from the evil in her and the evil with which she was created may allah protect us from all of this another thing he said we should seek refuge with regarding our children was the dua that he said bismillah allahumma janib al shaitan janib al shaitan ma rabbana oh allah janib al shaitan put away the shaitan from us the janib al shaitan ma rabbana and put away from the shaitan from what you bestow the top on us and the ways of putting away shaitan and getting saved from its evil is reciting surah al baqara Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, 'La taj'alu buyutakum kubura.' Don't make your homes like graveyards. Many Muslims, the homes are big like that. Nothing happens inside it from the deeps of obedience to Allah. This is bad." The Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, 'La taj'alu buyutakum kubura.' Don't make your houses where you are living now and you are alive. Don't turn them to grave sites as if the people inside them are dead. Why did he say that? Because they are not making acts of ibadah. They are living people, but they are living like dead human beings. May Allah protect them. Don't make your homes like that. فَإِنَّ الْبَيْتَ الَّذِي تُقْرَأُ فِيهِ سُورَةُ الْبَقْرَةِ لَا يَدْخُلُ الشَّيْطَانِ Because the home in which Surah Al-Baqarah is read, The shaitan does not go into that canopy house. So for the sake of Allah, let us be sure that Surah Al-Baqarah is read. Tukra'u Surah Al-Baqarah fi buyutina. We must be sure that Surah Al-Baqarah is read. Don't ask me, can you read it a radio? Can you read it to yourself as an individual? And learn the Surah. And then when you are unable, before you finish learning it, You can be playing your radio, inshallah, because it will still come under that figure to figure to game, figure to al majhul to qur'an fiha surah al baqarah. It will still come under figure to majhul. The last thing I would like to mention because of time is hifzul basar. May Allah protect us. Protect your sight. This generation, the big, 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 big. big thing to do to take in our sight you want to read news today you want to listen to the news you want to know what to do. you want to make a phone call you want to do the eyes have been poisoned with views that are not lawful when a woman sees a woman that is not properly dressed it is not lawful how much more a man sees a woman that's not properly dressed? When a man sees another man that's not properly dressed, most of us now we allow our children to watch WrestleMania. Go, so, and you see a man wearing what they wear. We all used to watch these things as kids, but this is bad. The least of what is bad about the least of what we can talk about. There are others is that we'll be seeing the nudity of men, and some women too. Some of us will see, we wear hijab, we wear this day. Why do you wear face veil and then you come inside your room to watch WrestleMania? The man that is naked. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Or a man that opens that kind of a station for his children? What's wrong with you, brother? Don't think about it. Is that a fair thing to do with the wealth that Allah has given you? You watch indecency. Think we all should respect ourselves and please. Allah where and his instructions where they should be that is a place of prayer may Allah forgive all of us closely related to that is ifzulisa mind what you say so the last two we are mentioning mind what you see what you watch and mind what you say if you say so many things today in the name of speaking of the name of speaking their own views the name of making comments the name of tweeting the way naming of the name of responding to what happened the name of facebook the name of all of these people have made statements by which 
unless Allah forgives them, they will be hauled into the fire. But what's this? What's the benefit? The song is being given to you for that to make what you do. Read the Quran with it. Worship Allah with it. Memorize the Quran. Read the Quran. Read that chat. Say what is good. The messenger warned of the rajah. And can I use me in the last one? The only after a Yakul Fire Awilia. One who believes in Allah on the day of Kiyama should say what is good or be silent. What are you saying, you as an individual? I think it will be sufficient for us to stop here today. I beg Allah and hope that the Allah will bless the little that we have said to make it beneficial to me, the speaker, and then the rest of us who listen to it. Imam Bismillah. While I was listening, I actually forget that I was the moderator. I was just listening. I was not making any notes because I was already engrossed in the in the talk. May Allah benefit every one of us. I mean, um, okay, we will give chance for question. Um, so the um, the question that uh, you would post, please take advantage of the chat platform to send in your question. We have just like uh, 10 minutes to do that, inshallah, before we bring this uh, session to a close. So if you have any question, we would urge you to send it now so that we can use the opportunity to ask um, our Sheikh before um, we end the program. There are people also listening on the uh, Imam. I'm only hearing you barely. Oh, okay. Okay, now I can hear you All right. better. All right. So, um, what I'm saying is that um, we would like that if you have a question, please yeah. um, send in the question through the chat platform. Uh, inshallah, we'll ask the question from the our start before he leaves before he leaves inshallah any question we have just 10 minutes to do that 10 minutes okay we have a question here if i have evil thoughts during ramadan is it still shaitan despite the fact that he has been chained so if i have evil thoughts is it still shaitan that is Still troubling me, but the yeah. Prophet. Well, this hadith of the shaitan or the shayateen being chained in Ramadan has been explained repeatedly. The Prophet said, Alayhi salatu wa salam, that Sufi that al marada, those who are chained amongst the shayateen, are marada to shayateen, the worst ones amongst them, not all of them. Please let's take note of this. There's a report in that hadith that makes us understand all of that. Not all the shayateen are tied. Allahu Akbar. Because the riwayah says, Marada to shayateen. The wicked ones amongst them. So you may have those whose degrees of evil is just all about suggesting evil to other people. So the worst ones amongst them, amongst them are tied, are where held back. But there will be others too who are not from this class of uh, evil among the jinns. So they, they, we don't have an evidence to say that they are also tied down. Those ones that are tied down are the wicked ones among them, as it occurs in the report in that hadith. I hope that that is clear, inshallah. So there may be others among the jinns too. Then you have your own power. You also have to tie the second thing that brings suggestion to the mind is your own hawa, your own desire. You have desire too. And these desires are not tied down in Ramadan, except you hidden in Ramadan yourself. 
and outside Ramadan. Most times these kinds of questions should not be restricted to Ramadan because our piety is not and should not be the piety of Ramadan. Ramadan piety it should not be Ramadan piety. Ramadan is to train us to be pious in the rest of the 11 months. May Allah grant us this good So another question is um, well, part of the way to get out of the Qaid, the Qaid of Shaitan, the traps of Shaitan, is that you recommended that we should um, um, be with the Jama'ah, we should observe the Jama'ah in the Masjid. Is this also applicable to women as well? Yes, if the community is a community where Islam is very strange, the woman should be going to the Masjid too. Because in the masjid, we will learn Islam. The companions, the wives and companions used to come to the masjid so that they can hear some of These days, we live in very strange communities. So instead of the woman staying at home and not observing salah at home, watching home videos, we have a lot of reports regarding this for many women to come to the masjid. Except if your husband is learned, and is able to teach you at home, then you may not need to come. You'll be gaining from what the husband tells you. But if the husband is not this kind of a husband who can teach you at home, don't stay ignorant and then you are at home. Please come to the masjid, observe the solar in the masjid, and listen to the classes in the masjid. That's the reason why by that I also like to encourage that the imams of the masjid take time to teach the people. The prophet is to do that, alayhi salatu salam, either after salatu fajri, or after Salat al take some time, no matter how small. Sometimes he would admonish the people through between Zuhur and after. Take some time out, as brief as it could be, to give a message that the people can hold on as there is one hope. So the woman should come to the masjid for the purpose of learning, being able to pray correctly, learn how to pray, learn other matters of the religion. This is better for her for the purpose of learning than just merely staying at home when she's not learning anything. Now, I'm Ima. Um, we have another question. Um, his water committing zina, he confided it, but it's not working. What advice what? can you give to such a man? You say what? Um, let's say a married man, a married man is uh, uh, committing zina, uh, confided in an individual. Somebody, the, the person who is who is asking this question said. The married man confided in him that yes, the deal of Zina. So it. how do how how do he deal it? He has tried several things, but it's not working. I think he still is feeling he has the company, he has the colleagues, the friends. He still has the friends, the people he relates with. He has not changed them. You can't change when your friends are not changing. It's difficult to change. If you have friends that are evil, you go along with them, commit that evil, and you say you repent from the evil of Zina or the like of it, it will be difficult for you. The way to do that is to change. Change your friends. Look for friends who don't do Zina. The evening lie, you will stop Zina. Don't call those Zina friends. Don't call them. Don't mail them. Don't message them. Don't have anything to do with them. Disconnect yourself from them. Be it. Being a light is the first step to disconnecting your mind from these people. Disconnect from them. If they are women too, disconnect from them. If there are women you have on your platform, on WhatsApp, on Facebook, disconnect from all of these. If you don't disconnect from them, it is your repentance is not complete. From the ways of disconnecting and seeking repentance for sins like this is that you disconnect from the means that lead to it. If they are friends, male or female, disconnect from them. Secondly, disconnect from the place you go. If there's a place you go to that makes Zina happen, don't go there again. It becomes unlawful for you to go. 
because it's now a means to go to the point. If you have a place to go to, each time I go to that place, you become exposed to you know, it becomes unlawful for you to go to that place. So don't go there again. Disconnect from the people. Disconnect from the place that leads you to Zina. Then look in, in replacement for that. Look for people and places you will go to that will make making Zina difficult for you. Then give so that part. Give so that part. Be regular in the masjid for salawat and all other things that we have made. And beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely to remove this evil from your mind. For those things are very important. You must disconnect from the people, you must disconnect from the place and connect the people who dis- disallow you from this evil and the place where this kind of an evil will not be encouraged. Allahu Akbar. Um, another question is um, um, okay, I have this continuous thoughts about my ibadat not being as accepted or being correct always this thought continuously disturb me um, could this also be from shaitan or how can I prevent this from happening it's from the evils of shaitan it brings it to your mind that your worship is not sound as if to say leave the worship throw away the worship just to make you be in fact it can tell you that you are not sincere why are you doing this, so oh, brother? You are just seeking popularity. It is from the ways of shaitan. So the way to do it is to reorganize your mind and be sure that you are doing it for the sake of Allah. Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave a good deed because you are afraid of insincerity. When shaitan tells you you are insincere, be sincere and then do the good deed. Change your intention. Don't stop the good deed. So this, this is, um, this is um, uh, one of the issues that um, I like to say about um, uh, the one who asks about uh, al-waswasa. It is called al-waswasa. It makes you think, that, oh, this your worship is not sincere. Oh, this your worship. Allah is not accepting. This your worship. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Be sure that you are doing it for the sake of Allah. Be sure that your your deeds are also in conformance with the Sunnah. And that's all. May Allah protect all of us. I mean, okay, um, one more question. Um, you recommended that uh, we should recite Surah Al-Baqarah in our home. Uh, I cannot recite Surah al I cannot recite because I don't know how to recite good the Quran yet. I'm making efforts, but not it's not getting to that level. Can I invite someone else to recite Surah Al-Baqarah in my house? Uh, maybe even before moving into a house, or even the one that I'm already uh, living. Can can I invite another person to recite on my behalf? If it happens that someone visits you, not that you went to call him to come and recite al Bapara in your house, because by the time you know it, it becomes a job now. If it happens that someone visits you, like it happens, and then he recites al Bapara in your house now, because it is Tukra, a, a house where Tukra is Surah al Quran, where Surah al Bapara is read, who read it? Is it the owner of the house? Is it the person residing in the house? or a visitor, it's not important. The fact is that Surah Al-Baqarah is read in the house. So if a person visits you and recites Surah Al-Baqarah in your house, now it falls under this narration. If you read it in your house, now it falls under this narration. If your house help, your house help read it, yes. Your wife reads it, your son reads it, anybody who reads it, yes. It falls under the category. But to start, uh, because oh, I am weak at it, you begin to contract it out. This is not good enough. It's not good. So read as much as you can, when you can. The plain and audio is even safer for you than going to invite somebody to come and be reading. By the time you know it, they start charging you fees for this. This is not a lot of things. So prefer to read it yourself or play and audio. Because plain and audio to fall under that meaning of Tukra'u. Uh, Surah Al-Quran, Al-Bayt. 
that surah to borrow surah to bakara is read in the house it will come under playing the audio so playing the audio is better than going to be bringing people who will start charging you and by the time you know it to become something else may allah protect all of us i mean okay um jazakum allah khair um so inshallah we would um this is all the time we we have available for the question um somebody asks whether um it is possible to get a recorded um version of this uh, lecture yes inshallah um inshallah we're going to work on the recording and share it um also on the social media inshallah and also you can always go to our youtube youtube channel and it's there inshallah it will be saved there and you can always go back and listen to it um, again inshallah anytime and you can probably also be able to download from there as well inshallah so i have a request imam yes all the, all the brothers listening and the women to make dua for me at this hour today yes okay now uh i hope everybody had that so um the sheikh thank is making a you. personal request that um uh, everyone should may please remember him in your dua at the time you are doing your iftar today. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make everything easy for him. Amen. And, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease all, all of his affairs. Amen. And may Allah Amen. subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant his heart desires. Amen. Amen. Um, so inshallah we are going to um, end the lecture inshallah. We have another lecture scheduled for next weekend on Sunday um, with another uh, uh, starts coming to um, teach us regarding um, balancing culture and Islam where are the conflicts, the points of conflict and point of, point of um, divergence, so how do we manage that, so inshallah uh, we have another lecturer coming the Ustaz um, Saeed Amza is coming and the last Sunday, inshallah, we are going to talk about the the condition of La ilaha illallah. Uh, this is, inshallah, going to be handled by one of our sheikh as well. Um, Abu Usama al Dhahabi from London is going to be giving out a talk on condition of La ilaha illallah on the last Sunday in Ramadan. So, inshallah, these are the other programs that we have in the public lecture for VGC Mosque. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this beneficial and the others also beneficial for everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. And we also use the opportunity to thank our Sheikh for uh, honoring us uh, with this, um, with this um, presence. May Allah continuously benefit him as well. Wa sallallahu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfiruka wa Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum as